Hey everyone, it's George Crows with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast, and I'm really glad you could join me today. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I know there's a lot of uh, horrible stuff going on in the world, and I've been thinking about it. Some days it's really wearing. Some days I'm okay. Some days I'm just lost. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about kind of small acts of kindness and why they matter so much and why they're really so important to me. And I know that we can get lost in the idea that people are just positive for no reason. But I, I really do believe that small acts of kindness can really add up over time. And I'm sure a really personal story today. And it's probably going to be hard to get through, to be honest with you. But I think it's really important to share. And I think it's important to share stuff that is hard um, for me to talk about. And the reason I'm even talking about all this was uh, I woke up on Sunday morning. It was actually my birthday. And a friend of mine who lives in Australia, who I met a long time ago, and we actually connected over social media, probably in 2009, 2010, he sent me a message. I don't think he, he knew it was my birthday, but that's what's really great about him. He sent me a message, something really, really kind, and he just does it all the time. He doesn't wait for special days or anything like this. And I'm going to kind of read it to you, but I'm not going to read it exactly because some of it is a little bit uh, really humbling. He's, uh, I'm going to kind of tone it down a little bit. And he just wrote this to me is he wrote, George, my friend, I, I've been thinking a lot about, uh, about, uh, I miss these challenge, th thinking a lot about you and miss these challenging times. Hope you and your family are safe and doing well. I want you to know that your positive tweets and this chaos has been welcomed by many people I come to speak to. It is in times like this, that these little things can have a significant impact on the lives of others. And you'll never know how one simple tweet might change someone's life or even save a life in today's mixed world mixed up world. Anyways, buddy, I just wanted to connect to wish you all well and say you continue to inspire and give hope to many. And I, I was really honored by my friend's message and it really made my day. And yeah, and he, I don't even think it was the first message I received on my birthday. He's in Australia. He's probably going to bed as I'm waking up. And it was a really kind thing to wake up to. And there's just kind of serendipity about this tweet is I actually received another tweet on the same day uh, from someone who I really look up to. Her name is Mary Jane Berkey. And it might be Burke, might be Berkey. I, I, I apologize. And she just tweeted uh, last night, and I'm recording this on a Monday. And again, it was on my birthday. She tweeted on the same day as, as my friend, uh, G. Kuros, you are something special. Thanks for sharing positivity. Look forward to having you back in Marin County soon. She's uh, by San Francisco. And every time I see Mary Jane Berkey tweet to me, it just lifts me up every single time. Every time. Um, it's really positive, really makes a difference for me. And it's not just because she's a wonderful person, which she is, but I have a special connection with her. And this is the hard part. This is going to be the hard part of the story to tell. Um, about seven years ago, I was speaking in San Francisco in Marin County. I was speaking there, and we were actually working together as a team. And right before um, we were doing this work together, I was about to go and speak to a large group. And I had turned my phone off because I usually had turned my phone off, so I wasn't interrupted by messages. So I got a message from my brother, Alec, which he, I'll be honest, he doesn't text me a bunch. And so um, I was kind of shocked that he messaged me and he said, where are you? I need to talk to you. Dad has died. So I remember I actually was on my computer and I just looked at it stunned. Like I can remember this, like it was three seconds ago. And I just slowly shut down my computer and I looked at Mary Jane and said, I have to go. My father has passed away. And it was a really obviously horrible moment. My, my dad had no illness, um, nothing. There was no sign of him getting sick or anything like that. So it was a shock and I'm in San Francisco and my parents live in Humboldt, Saskatchewan, Canada. So I'm just thinking, how am I going to get home? Like, how am I going to figure out how to get home? Uh, it's really hard to get there. It's not easy. Uh, flights from San Francisco to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan are not easy. 
And I remember just kind of sitting there in shock and Mary Jane was on the phone dealing with stuff to make sure that she could do whatever she needed from me at that time. And I'll just never forget this one particular moment because I'm just floored, can't believe what's going on. And this one moment, she actually came up to me and I remember putting her hand on my back and she put a rock shaped as a heart, just a really tiny rock on the table. And she didn't really say anything. But for some reason, that just gave me some comfort in that moment. It was just the smallest little gesture. And it really made a difference. And I don't know why. And I remember, so she actually had to drive me back uh, to my hotel. And you have to go across the Golden Gate Bridge when uh, you're going from Marin County into San Francisco. And I remember distinctly just kind of being shocked. And I remember going over that bridge and I could feel my father's presence in the sun when we were going over the bridge. It was just really surreal. I could feel him kind of looking right there. And I went home, still obviously struggle with it to this day. Hard to tell the story. But I just remember Mary Jane, how she dealt with me that day and, and how how important it was in that one little act I don't know why it just kind of stuck with me and it was something that um, I had kind of held on to and so uh, a few years later uh, actually three years later about a month before the anniversary of my father's passing away Mary Jane had uh, tweeted me in 2016 Thanks to G. Crows, Marin superintendents will be sharing your book for, far and wide. And she shared a picture with me on Twitter of my book, The Innovator's Mindset. And what she had done was she had taken the book and tied um, I had a ribbon, I don't know, tied string around it uh, to make kind of a cross. And on each book was a small heart-shaped rock. And it was just a little thing, but it really was powerful. It was really amazing. And it just reminded me of that moment, just her kindness and how much it meant to me. And just people like that, just they, they make you better because you have no choice because they're just, they're just such positive influence. And I just, I think a lot about this and I, I really believe this, and this is why I connected with my friend Gary and Mary, what she had shared, Mary Jane had shared. And I shared this in the blog post that if you still don't think a single tweet can say something meaningful, you might not be really paying attention. So that's really kind of shaped a lot of the way that I do things, the way I connect. And people like Mary Jane, my friend Gary in Australia, they, they, with their small little acts of kindness that might seem insignificant in that time, they can make a really huge impact. And I've been talking a lot about this lately as all this stuff is going down with uh, pandemic and coronavirus. I know people are really struggling and I know, like, obviously I'm struggling too. Uh, I know that I'm really blessed also. And because of being grateful for those blessings. I really go to my way to try to do things that uplift. I really try to share other people's stuff. And I've been really trying to go to my way to have those really private personal moments to let people know the impact. I've been having a lot more phone calls than I've had, you know, probably in the previous 10 years. And one of the things that I've kind of always had as a rule for me since probably Mary Jane and connecting is that when I tweet something or when I connect with people, especially on a virtual setting, I just assume that they could be struggling with something that I don't know about. And I'm always thoughtful of that. And whether I'm right or wrong, just to have that knowing, it makes me always think about try to be positive and make sure that you elevate people um, in this work. Cause that's what as educators we're supposed to do. That's, the work that we do is to elevate everyone that we serve to make them better. 
than um, when we meet them after we leave. And I know that I'm not perfect with it. I know I haven't always been 100%, but I do try to keep that always in my mind as my goal. And it's because of people like Mary Jane, Gary, like I said earlier, that have taught me how important that is, that you never know what could save you. Gary said, you don't know when a tweet could save a life. And I, I always think about Mary Jane in that moment. I felt so alone because I was so far away from my family, how that little small gesture meant everything to me in the moment. And it was really powerful. And um, just always think about that idea of that these one, one little thing, one little act of kindness can mean everything to somebody. So it's always, it's always your best bet to err on the side of positive, just like Mary Jane did. Thanks for taking time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.